Baada ya kufaulu vyema kwa miradi ya kwanza kwanza ya unyunyiziaji maji mashamba hapa nchini kama vile Mwea, Tana, Perkera na Ahero, mamlaka ya unyunyizi nchini NIA ikishirikiana na Benki ya Dunia iliamua kuanzisha mradi mwingine wa aina yake katika eneo la Bura, Tana River. Ni mradi wa kipekee kwani haukutegemea nguvu za wafungwa kama ilivyokuwa katika miradi yote ya zamani ambapo wafungwa wa Maumau walitumika kuchimba mitaro ya maji katika miradi ya Mwea, Tana River na Perkera. But this time not Maumau and Tennis who are set through. People were being drawn from all the provinces. They then through the provincial administration. They were being selected through a system which was being set by the government from all over the, over the, the, the country and they were set through there. Mradi huu ulioko yapata kilomita hamsini hivi kutoka mji wa Hola ambao ndio makao makuu ya kaunti ya Tana River unapata maji yake kutoka mto Tana ulioko mbali sana. We pump water uh, using diesel powered generators. Once we pump the water travels about 50 km to where now farming is done. Which is very expensive. Uh, currently we have two standby pumps of discharge to 2.5 cubic meters per second and we also have two running pumps of the similar discharge Mkurugenzi wa NIA Mugambi Gitonga anafahamu fika jinsi mambo yalivyo hapa In this project we are having some challenges for in a utilization all this land which has been open for irrigation is not has not been utilized about half of it has, which is, has been utilized and we are really encouraging farmers to take more and produce in more areas so that all the land can be can be utilized. Tulipo zuru eneo hili hali ya anga haikuwa kawaida. Mvua ilikuwa imenyesha na kote kote maji yalielea ishara kwamba eneo hili ni tambarare na vyema kwa kilimo cha unyunyiziaji maji mashamba. Meneja wa mradi huu Peter Orwa alitutembeza hapa ili tuweze kufahamu jinsi mradi huu unavyoendelea kwa sasa. And uh, we had the first farmers settled in 1981-1982. Bora ilianzishwa katika mwaka wa 1977 huko ekari zaidi ya 1600 zikilengwa kutayarishwa ili kuwafaidi wa Kenya kutoka tabaka mbalimbali. Mbali. This is a project which also we have been able to expand from uh, the then 2500 acres to the current 12000 acres. Bora ni mradi wa aina yake na pia inajivunia wakulima wa aina yake. The farmers who are settled uh, some of them were from the detainment camp that was at Hola. There were also other farmers uh, who were selected based on the recommendation of the chiefs from their respective areas and they also ended up in Bora. A few of other farmers also came from the disciplined forces so it is a complete mix of the face of Kenya within our scheme. Na baada ya kuendelea vyema kwa miongo kadhaa Upepo wa maendeleo ulivuma hata zaidi hapa na mradi uliendelea kuongezeka. Zao la pamba likiwa ndilo lilotegemewa hapa. We are coming from an era, an era where the recognition and the acceptability of irrigation as a vehicle toward development and job creation. Acceptability was very low. We are at a point where this acceptability we are seeing it is okay. Nakumbuka hata mimi nakumbuka kuna siku hapa nimeharima ishamba hii. Nikalima nyanya, mtu wa kwanza kutoa nyanya katika Tana River kupeleka Kongoya Mombasa ni mimi. Lakini kufikia miaka ya tisini, mradi huu ulididimia na kuzorota hadi ulipoanguka katika miaka ya tisini. Uh, mambo ikaingia vile ilivyoingia. Ndio skimu ikaja ikasoroteka, ikakufa. Maraga tulikuwa wakati wakati ikifanyika yote ilikuwa chini ya World Bank hizo pesa zikaenda zikiisha wadu bango walipojiondoa ikawa serikali ishindwe ku manage ile scheme na tunashukuru wakati ilipokufa yeye serikali watu wacha 
tulifanya kazi zingine ambazo kama mimi nikikumbuka wakati mwingine natamani atakulia machosi hali haikuwa hali matatizo na mahangaiko yaliwakumbwa wakulima hapa babangu alikuwa afanya kazi moyo rais Miro akaniambia haya mashamba ambayo ikipeanwa watu wengi walikataanga sababu mashamba sababu ya nini walikuwa naona ni kama mateso mimi akaniambia siku moja yuko jambo sitoke bura siku moja siku moja itakuwa fanya nini itakuwa kufufuka madamu iko chini ya nini ya serikali sasa mimi nilikaa nikaona mambo yameharibika kabisa nikajaribu kutafuta kibarua kujistiri ya trisi kuuza maji kwa shilingi shilingi kwa mtungi nikaona hivi nifai wengi wao walihama na waliushindwa walibaki hapa kukabiliana na hali hiyo ngumu mara nyingi walitegemea misaada ya chakula na kutafuta ajira kwa njia zozote zile mwisho nikaingia kwa kazi ya hamari sio kama unajua kazi ya hamari <laughs> kubeba magunia nilifanya kazi sile bonde hapa bora for 15 years na tumaa siku moja nikasema one day nitakusanya kidogo kidogo na siku moja sikimu ikifufuka tafaa nini tulikuwa na matumaini kwamba sikimu siku moja tafaa nini itafufuka Katika mwaka 1993 hadi mwaka 2005 serikali ilijaribu mara kadhaa kuufufua mradi huu lakini bado uliambulia patupu. Lakini baada ya mwaka 2005 ufufuzi ulirejelewa na upanzi wa mimea kadhaa ulianza kuwa wamu. Na kufikia mwaka 2009 wakulima walikuwa wamerejelea vyema uzalishaji lakini hawakuweza kufikia uzalishaji wa asilimia hamsini. Of course it's a process which takes time because it is one thing to put infrastructure but also it is another thing to have the infrastructure get utilized. And that is through capacity building, turning farmers way of thinking, ensuring them that, that they appreciate farming also is a way of life. Walipata mapato ya chini kwa kuwa mmea kama pamba uliokuwa unategemewa sana hapa ulikuwa umekosa soko kabisa. Uh, with the challenges with the marketing of cotton later on farmers shifted to seed maize. We've been doing seed maize for a while uh, together with the horticultural crops until up to very late from around 2016 that farmers now started doing rice Mamlaka ya Unyizi nchini NIA ilikuwa inaendesha mradi huu kutokea kuanzishwa kwake hadi mwaka 1985 Hapo ndipo mradi huu ulisimamiwa na Wizara ya Kilimo na baadaye kubadilishwa mara kwa mara kwa wizara mbalimbali Mwishowe katika mwezi Desemba mwaka 2005 mradi huu hatimaye ulirejeshwa katika mamlaka ya unyunyizi nchini. Ikiwa inatumia maji kutoka mtambo wake ulioko umbali wa kilomita hamsini kutoka mto wa Tana pia una changamoto zake. It's a project which we are now changing from pumping through this road to gravity so we have gone 25 km upstream the river we have done an intake we are right now doing a canal which is at advanced stage of completion and we will be able to now and uh, deliver water to this scheme through um, the gravity of course it becomes cheaper when you you, you do it through gravity Wafanyikazi wa mradi huu waliojiunga nayo miaka ya 80 kama vile mimi ni naitwa Morris Juma Obuya. Machina naitwa Daniel Apuna Nyangara. Jina langu naitwa Saleh Guyu. Huko majina naitwa Veronica Ngima. Wanaelewa barabara jinsi hali imekuwa hapa. Niliandikwa tangu mwaka 1982 mwezi wa Mei. Kwa maji safi. Obuya ambaye ni afisa wa nyanjani anakumbuka vyema jinsi mradi ulivyoanza. Eh hali ya infrastructure ilikuwa bado ni mpya, mitaro yetu ilikuwa bado mpya. Na wakulima pia wajua walikuwa wametolewa sehemu mbalimbali. Kwa hivyo wengine hawakuwa bado hawajazoea hii weather hapa. Kwa hivyo wengine walitatizika kwa hali ya kiafya. Ndio ikabidi serikali ikajenga hii hospitali iliyoko hapa. Kazi yake nyanjani ilikuwa ni kuwafunza wakulima hao jinsi ya kuendesha kilimo cha unyunyizaji maji mashamba. Ilikuwa kazi ni kufunza wakulima namna ya kupanda hiyo pamba ile spacing 
na hata namna ya kunyunyiza maji kwa sababu ilikuwa kwa wengine ilikuwa ni jambo mpya kwa hivyo tuliwafunza namna ya kupiga hata siphon kutoka kwa mtaro kwa yuko kwa fida kanal kwa maana anasema ni kesi ndio mbendu ndio mtufundisha ndio mtuleta hapa afadhali Enyangala aliajiriwa hapa katika mwaka 1984 alipata mafunzo yake katika taasisi ya unyunyizi huko Hola kabla ya kufika hapa kwa elimisho wa kulima jinsi ya kuendesha kilimo hiki kila mfanyakazi hasa mimi nilikuwa napatiwa kulima kiasi fulani unaoshukulikia NIP kawa na mfundisha bila nita ku, kuongea na wakulima visuri kwa maana wakulima toka kila tisitu kama kila area kila vile yani tuseme tu tribe sote siko hapa pura lakini anasimulia vile ilivyokuwa vigumu sana kuwafunza wakulima waliotoka tabaka mbalimbali na ambao wengi wao hawakuwa wameona kilimo cha unyizi maji. Wengine walikuwa na madharau, wengine wamekuja hivi hivi wanakuja tu kuangalia na kuto. Lakini sasa sasa bila nimemfurahisha wakulima sasa hivi wamekuja wameelewa jina kilimo ile iko. Bana wakati huo ilikuwa ngumu, unaambia mkulima unafanya hata kujua. Wengine wakiwa mambo ya irrigation. Sasa unapata hii msaidio tunapatia mbolea unapata hiyo mbolea patana mkulima yake nini kwa shamba anau lakini sasa hizo wakulima wanajua mambo ya kilimo iko namna gani Sale Guyo ambaye ni karani katika mradi huu alijiunga nao mwaka 1985 na anakumbuka vyema jinsi mradi huu ulivyokuwa ukiendelea vyema ah, zamani kulikuwa kilimo kikifanyika ni ni pamba na mahindi ni kwa kilimo hiyo na maji haikuwa na stop page ama haikuwa na kusuma masumama ni full time maji iko kwa mtaro na sijaona hitilafu ya wakulima walikuwa kilalamika hapo wakati huo eh. lakini tangu mabadiliko ya kukabidhiwa kwa wizara ya kilimo ilipofanyika hali ikawa si hali tena katika 80s miaka 80s lakini like pamba ilikuwa kilimo kufika miaka 1990s e, pamba kidogo hapo haikuwa inafanya kama 1989 ikaingia ugonjwa pamba ikaisha na ikawa ni shinda maji hakuna tukamaliza hiyo sata ya pamba ikawa ni ukame na tuliteseka wakati hiyo nimeanza kuwa ni mimi ni mama na niko na watoto. Mwanzo mwanzo huko nyuma kulikuwa na shida ya maji. Kulikuwa na maji hakuna maji kwa kanali. Lakini sasa kutoka wakati NIB imekuja wakati ya 89 kulikuwa na maji. Lakini kaji ikakatika kuwa na ukafu. Lakini wakati NIB imeingia maji ikawa haina shida wakatengeneza mitaro. Tukawa tunapata maji vizuri na tunalima vizuri. Bora ilianza na wakulima wapatao 2245 waliokuwa wakiishi katika vijiji 12 hivi. Wote walipewa mashamba kukuza mimea mbalimbali na katika eneo kubwa lile na rutuba. Farmers in the scheme uh, has an acre, three acres each in separate locations. Zao la pamba lilikuzwa hapa lakini wakulima wamekuwa wakiingilia uzalishaji wa mimea mingine kutokana na mabadiliko ya kiuchumi. As at inception the first crop farmers were doing was cotton. And the cotton did well until uh, there were challenges with the cotton production within the country and worldwide. Later on farmers shifted to seed maize. We did seed maize for a number of years. Katika mwaka wa 2016 hadi mwaka wa 2017 wakulima hapa walipata zaidi ya shilingi milioni 60 huku wakibugia kibindoni zaidi ya shilingi milioni 39 mwaka wa 2019. Kwa ujumla wakulima waliokuza mboga na matunda kama vile tikiti maji, watermelon ukipenda, nyanya na vitunguu walipata zaidi ya shilingi milioni 200 kwa mwaka kuti ya moyo na kuwapendeza wakulima hapa ni zao speciali ya mpunga unaokuzwa hapa kwa sasa. The rice that we do in Bura is called Komboka rice. That's the variety for the rice that we do in Bura. And uh, this is a semi aromatic variety. Yule manager tuko na yeye ndio ameshikilia kilimo ya mchere sana. 
na kilimo ya mchere kwa kusema ukweli itakomboa watu ya mvua kwa sababu hiyo mchere inasaa na inasaa kweli na ina gharama nyingi it does well and uh, farmers can get up to 35 to 40 bags per per, per acre each of 90 kg in fact in Ibula, they are saying they are calling it kombo abula you know it's something which now they are using it to to turn around their fortunes within the scheme because when they grow maize the margins the economics of growing maize is very is not very positive uh, to the farmer but when they compare it with the rice which they are producing there they are able to make uh, a lot of uh, quite some profit a certain profit and they are able to be motivated enough to, to farm mimi nitalima mchere nikipata namna lakini nitalima namna gani ikiwa mbolea ndio hiyo imeenda juu Mbolea ndiyo italete shinda maji iko lakini mbolea bila tunasikia hata kama anajaribu kujikakamua sitaweza. Ah uh, the other crops that farmers also do currently uh, the green grams there is watermelon and uh, total acreage is 3011 acres currently under crop. Rice is overtaking the other crops with about 2000 acres under crop and uh, Farmers are putting more acres under rice. Huku ukarabati na ujenzi wa njia maalum ya kuvuta maji bila mitambo ya dizeli ikianzishwa mwakani. Mamlaka ya unyonyezi nchini NIA inalenga kuokoa zaidi ya shilingi milioni 3.5 zinazotumika kwa sasa kugaramia mafuta ya dizeli ya kuvuta maji kutoka mto Tana na kuwafikishia wakulima walio zaidi ya kilomita hamsini kutoka kwa mto Tana. Lengo ni kiwa kupanua zaidi kiwango cha hekari za unyenyezi ya Pabura kwa manufaa ya wenyeji na taifa kwa jumla.